I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Luis Hurtado. Uh, I'm a medical doctor. I'm a theologian. And I'm, I'm a happy married man. <laughs> uh, my wife, Carla, is uh, an accountant and a, and a theologian too. So we, we were missionaries with our two kids in the mountains of Mexico among the Shiyui people who's an uh, indigenous tribe here in, in Mexico. And we work all around the country, visiting other, other ethnic groups here within the country. And uh, so we have a clinic there. We work with, with two uh, native churches there in the mountains. And uh, well, we've been there for almost 12 years now, uh, working on the clinic and w with the church and, and doing also, uh, you know, teaching for people who want or think that they have a missionary calling. So actually the last two months we had uh, our yearly discipleship course on missions. And this year we had six students. So we, we have had this amount in the past, but only girls. That's very interesting that, uh, you know, uh, as we know, uh, 70, 75% of missionaries are single ladies. You know, uh, and spe specifically cross-cultural missionaries. So the same happens with our school. We mostly have girls, but this year we had two, two, two guys, two, two men coming to our course. And it was very interesting because also, besides being the, the biggest mixed group of students, uh, they were very young. The oldest was 21, and the youngest 17. Actually, we had their, we had his parents sign a letter of, uh, like a disclaim, a disclaimer, you know, like okay, you are sending your your uh, the legal age here in Mexico is 18, so uh, okay, you are sending your underage uh, uh, son to us, and you know it's risky. So, <laughs> but it was great, you know, it was it was very interesting. Very interesting happened. Very interesting things happened. Like um, uh, first, we faced generation. I don't know how to say it, but but uh, they were. Uh, I, I want to say this discreetly, but they were abandoned by their parents. Even you know, at least. Uh, three of them uh, live. They they don't live with their with one of their parents anymore, whether she died or or because of a divorce, you know. Uh, and the other ones, you know, the, their fathers were their parents. Their uh, spe more, very specifically, their fathers were absent. So it was very interesting. Uh, uh, they could be my my children, you know. <laughs> like I'm 42, they were 21, the, the the oldest. So they could be my children, and it the dynamics were very interesting. Uh, if, like in one of our conversations, I called Esteban to one of them, and Esteban is my oldest son. So I was like, "Oh man, I'm projecting myself here." <laughs> so it was it was interesting, and and so uh, it was exhausting having uh, teenagers there at home, and you know, working in our program, we work out with with the students and stuff. So I had to work out with them, and and you know, they they were full of energy all the time, asking questions, and uh, you know, trying stuff and so but, but it was good it was a very interesting uh, course this year and so we just just uh, we we on behalf of them we, we would ask for your prayers since they they uh, they have a very big challenge being part of this generation and uh, uh, yeah so uh, may the Lord allow them to be like to the to their generation and to be guarded from all the 
uh, evil in, in, in our present time. Yes. Luis, what will they be doing? After our course or in our course? Uh, no, you said they were tr be training. Is this just, is this Bible training or is this training for leadership in a particular area? Ah, uh, good. Yeah, so so our course is focused on on missions. So they they people people sign sign in to our course, sign up to our course to find out if they they are called to missions. But in our course, we we have a like a holistic training. So we we focus on on habits life habits like uh, prayer um, devotions you know like having a quiet time workout exercise and and just regular life skills like cooking washing uh, your own clothes and you know cleaning your house and this is uh, um, because this is like it like it is because we receive a lot of young people And they like, well, uh, some of them are like 25, 26, and they can't cook, for instance, or they, they have never used a washing machine. So, so we focus on that training. And then we add biblical and missionary training. So we, we, we uh, teach theology. We have a every week is a mini course on something. So first week is at, uh, uh, we 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 talk about we teach about God's character and and nature. Second week we talk about God's heart uh, toward the lost people. Uh, third week we we check on personality traits and how who we are and how we can be transformed by Jesus. Fourth week, we, we uh, do uh, an inner healing process. Fifth week, we work on, uh, on uh, anthropology and linguistics. And the, and the sixth week, we work on planning a, a program, a cross-cultural uh, ministry program. So, so they in the last two weeks they they go to a village nearby village without us and they have to develop their ministry there. The the, the one the one they designed it in the la, in the sixth week of our program. That that's our training. So it, it it's only eight weeks. So so we it, it's you know it's fast paced and very intense for in in both ends. <laughs> For them and for us, we we do counseling like one once a, once a week. We sit down with them, Caroline, uh, Carol and I, my wife and I, and we 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 do some counseling. So we we start like we ask them about their families and how they are feeling with the program, and then you know they come out with some issues, family issues, uh, at some point. So we 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 have that kind of um, ca counseling uh, process with them. And so uh, adding to the inner healing uh, uh, training or process we have specifically in, in the third or fourth week. That's what, that's what we do. It's kind of neat to see how all these gifts that you've developed over the years, right? You're a medical doctor, And then you trained as a missionary. And so you have the biblical theology background. Mm -hmm. And then you got your master's in counseling. So you have that family counseling background. Mm -hmm. you, you've worked on the Bible projects there and determined that since there's an oral culture, that you would start developing oral Bible stories so that people can make disciples of people in their native language. So you have all these different facets that you keep on adding to what you're already a medical doctor, you know? And so that's really awesome that you have all these skill sets and you continue using them for the community that that's in your area, plus people that come in. And you're training disciples that then go out into the world. 
Are, don't you have a missions training conference coming up with um, Arturo here real soon? And maybe Paco's involved in that as well, right? Yeah, well, it, yeah, it's it's tomorrow. It starts tomorrow, actually. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So we are, I, actually, I'm in Mexico City preparing okay. for that. And uh, it starts tomorrow and we will, I don't know, Paco, uh, did Arturo invite you? Yeah, perdón, Paco, te invito Arturo. Estás silenciado, amigo. Me comentó hace dos meses que nos reunimos a tomar un café. Eh, platicamos de muchas about cosas. Two months ago, we me comentó a... que iba a hacer ese curso y que, que me iba a invitar, pero al final yo creo que no, algo falló, sí. He, he told me about this course and he invited me, but, but and he would he would tell me more about it, but I, I, he forgot maybe. Yeah. Él ha estado muy ocupado, estuvo estuvo en y lo he visto. Otomis. Estuvo con los Tarahumaras. He has sí, been sí, very sí. busy. He, he's been traveling a lot within the country and outside the country. So, so he was he, working on the church yesterday, fast and furious. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. He was, he was yeah. working there. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah, so uh, that, oh, yeah, go ahead. You said prayer requests for these, these discipleship students, but what about exactly. your family and, and those things as well? Well, as you can imagine, we are uh, going through the, the busiest time of, of the year. Yeah. Uh, we have this conference, we have the discipleship course, and our, our regular stuff keeps, keeps on. Um, so, uh, we, uh, you know, just for strength and wisdom, Uh, and uh, one of the blessings we have uh, as, as missionaries being parents is that uh, we have a good homeschool system. So actually my wife is right now teaching my kids. So just, you know, for my kids to, to have energy and to have a good attitude uh, because um, after this uh, Uh, conference we are we're having a mission trip to to Aguatitla to Hidalgo and then we are going to to Irapuato and we are having a mini mission conference with Carlos Home Church in Irapuato City that's uh, it's close to to Mexico City and so it's it's going to be a month uh, outside home so um, so it's going to be kind of tough for our kids And, and for Carla, since she has to keep homeschool up. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the special prayer requests and, uh, it's that uh, there's something going on in our country. Um, uh, I don't know if you heard, but Paco, I don't know if you heard. No sé si oíste de los atentados que hubo en varias ciudades a los Oxos. Sí, Luis, está muy fuerte la violencia en Irapuato, en Jalisco y en Guanajuato. Yeah, so some some states in our country, including San Luis Potosí, where we are, are are having a, a very steep increase in violence and, and and felonies, and you know it's pretty tough. So I don't know what's going on. We don't know what's going on. Uh, the, uh, there's a general unrest. And um, so please pray for that. Uh, uh, interestingly, drug cartels and violence are moving from big cities to small cities and even villages. So we are in our village. We, we've heard of being kidnapped and, and kids consuming drugs more and more intensely. Um, actually, During the discipleship course, a uh, 17-year-old kid took his life because he was really drugged, really high, high, and and he was uh, being uh, what do you call abused by the kids who started him in, on drugs. So it's been very complicated. 
very, very complicated in our area, in that in our in our area and in and in our country in general. So please pray for that. Pray for that. And um, and the last prayer request is that we are having a dentist from Dominican Republic visiting us for 20 days. This is the first time we have a dentist for uh, that long. <laughs> so it's gonna, you know, I, I have to install stuff in our clinic, stuff that, dental things that are abandoned there. <laughs> the dental chair and all the equipment. So I have to get it ready for her to work. And uh, um, somehow I will I will do it. And, uh, sure and we, yeah, we need, we need to decide. Well, we are asking for donations uh, with our dentist, dentist friends. Um, I think that would be the most efficient way to do it. Uh, compared to buying new stuff because we don't know if we will, we will have another dentist come that long right so so i don't know i mean it would be nice to be, to have new equipment but uh but we, i mean I, I think that the the best way is to have some something borrowed and then yeah yeah, and, and, and have her work there. So her name is Ilma, and and I, she has type 1 diabetes, but she looks like a brave girl. She's young. I think she's 26, 25, 26. Yeah. So, awesome. yeah, pray for us in, for this season. It, it's going to be interesting. I, I, I think we will have big opportunities to share the gospel through the stories, and through you know in the waiting line for them 